Welcome to Mikon's hardware. I have already tried to test Machinist X99Z motherboard. Unfortunately, that time my experiment has failed. I have tried to overclock Intel Core i7-6800K on this motherboard, and after that attempt motherboard has died. I have tried to revive the motherboard with all possible ways, tried to use different CPU, tried to flash BIOS with a USB programmer. Unfortunately, I could not make my USB flash programmer to work with this BIOS, and nothing else helped. Still, I felt really sorry to throw out the motherboard just like that, so I let it lie in the box until I figure out how to revive it. One boring evening, I didn't really have what to do, and I started to try to revive the motherboard. After multiple different attempts, I was finally able to do that. What I had to do, I had to plug power supply onto my motherboard, which is 24-pin motherboard power connector, 8-pin CPU power connector, put in motherboard battery onto the motherboard, remove everything from the motherboard, which includes CPU, RAM, graphics card and SATA drives. After that, my USB flash programmer was able to identify the BIOS chip on the motherboard. At that moment I was really happy, but unfortunately trying to read or write a BIOS was always hanging. After a few attempts I decided to use back port of my motherboard, which supports fast charging. Means it's able to provide higher electricity current and maybe higher voltage. Using this back port of my motherboard I was finally able to flush correct BIOS onto Machinist X99Z, and that brought the motherboard back to life. So in this video I'm going to provide you detailed and complete review of Machinist X99Z version 102. Let's start with the motherboard specification. The motherboard supports Intel LJ2011 version 3 CPUs, which are i7-5000-6000 series, as well as Intel Xeon E5, 3rd version and 4th version. The motherboard uses chipset Intel C612, not the desktop variant which is X99. On the motherboard there are 4 memory slots which support quad-channel DDR4, regular desktop RAM as well as server-registered ECC memory modules. There are 4 USB 3 ports and 4 USB 2 ports on the back side, as well as basic Realtek LAN port and 5.1 audio also from Realtek. On the motherboard itself there is one 4-pin fan header, one 3-pin fan header, one PCI Express X16 slot, one PCI Express X1 slot, two M.2 slots, one is PCI Express 3.0 X4, another one is SATA slot. Apart of the M.2 SATA slot, there are also six SATA 3 headers on the motherboard. The BIOS chip location is quite convenient, so if you are using USB flash programmer, you don't have to remove anything you can connect straight to the chip. I have tested all possible ports and slots on the motherboard. Unfortunately, I still do not have any PCI Express X1 expansion cards, that's why this slot remained untested. USB 3.0 ports work, USB 2 ports work, SATA 3 ports also work, M.2 slots are working as well. SATA port as well as NVMe port are doing exactly what they should. If you install a SATA drive into the SATA slot it works, but if you install it into NVMe slot it does not work. The same applies to the NVMe SSD drives. It doesn't work in the SATA slot, but it does work in the NVMe slot. PCI Express X16 slot works with no problems, I have tested different graphics cards, no issues. Fan headers are as always on all Chinese X99 motherboards, 4-pin fan header is working and it's possible to regulate 4-pin fan speed, 3-pin fan header is not regulating fan speed, and if you connect 3-pin fan to the 4-pin fan header it's not possible to regulate this fan speed. Audio quality is acceptable, but you have to manually install Realtek drivers. Network port works with no issues, as usual I have performed my crystal disk mark test with a network storage as well as tried to copy large files over network. No issues or complaints here. Windows sleep mode supported, Linux is also supported, booting from NVMe drive works, Turbo Boost on all the CPUs that I have tested is working properly. Unfortunately, the stock BIOS does not have options to configure RAM timings, but there is already a BIOS available for this motherboard which has RAM timings configuration, and I will provide a link to the original video where I have got the BIOS. After you flush the customized BIOS, there will be an option which does not have a name, it's just like an expandable spoiler, inside there you can manage your RAM timing settings as well as RAM speed. VRM thermal performance is quite poor. 
With the stock Xeon E5 1650V3 with Prime 95 stress test, the temperature of the VRAM heatsink was going more than 80 degrees Celsius. This means that VRAM components themselves are probably higher than 80 degrees and reaching something like 90 degrees. Thus, I would strongly recommend to have extra airflow if you decide to use this motherboard, and probably it would be a good idea to use some other motherboard if you have something like Xeon E5 2678 with Turbo Boost unlocked 12 cores. It's also important to mention that the FPT tool, which I usually use to flush and read motherboard biases, does not work on Machinist X99Z. Luckily, Afo Win X64 works from Windows and it's still possible to read and write BIOS using this application straight from the Windows. Now let's take a look how Xeon E5 2650V3 behaves on Machinist X99Z motherboard. Maximum RAM speed is, as designed by Intel DDR4-2133, unfortunately 2 sticks 4GB each, DDR4-2400 CL17 do not work on this motherboard, the same as on the previously tested Chinese motherboards. Seems like this kind of memory with just 4 banks is not supported on Chinese X99 motherboards. All the other memory configurations I have tested are working no problem. 2 sticks 16GB each, 2 sticks 8GB each, 2 sticks 16GB each ECC registered memory, 2 sticks 32GB each ECC registered memory, as well as 128GB of RAM with 4 sticks 32GB each. Turbo Boost Unlock also works. You have to use modified BIOS as usual, CPU power management doesn't work as expected. Links to Geekbench 5 and user benchmark results will be in the video description if you are interested. I have also tested unlocked Xeon E5 1650V3 on this motherboard and Core i7-6800K. Unfortunately, in both cases overclocking is not possible. If I try to enable overclocking feature, which is responsible for overclocking on the other motherboards such as Huanangzhi or Klesre, motherboard gets bricked again. To validate this problem, I have tried to enable overclocking feature on Core i7-6800K a few times, and after each time the motherboard failed to start and I had to write BIOS with my BIOS programmer to restore the motherboard functionality. There is an extra option called XE Ratio Limit, it's possible to adjust CPU core clock multiplier, and CPU-Z starts to show that the maximum multiplier is what is applied in the BIOS, but CPU is still not turbo boosting up to the applied value. For example, if I apply maximum core ratio limit 40, CPU-Z demonstrates that CPU frequency range is between 1.2 GHz to 4.0 GHz, but in reality CPU does not go any higher than the standard 3.8 GHz. This is very sad and maybe I'm doing something wrong, but unfortunately in my case with this motherboard, no matter which by settings I apply, unlocked Xeon E5 1650V3 did not turbo boost any higher than 3.8 GHz. Thus, if you are aiming to overclock your CPU, Machinist X99Z is definitely not the motherboard you shall choose. It has very poor VRM thermal performance and does not support overclocking. Other than that, my Xeon E5 1650V3 worked well with 2 sticks 16GB each, 2 sticks 8GB each, 2 sticks 16GB each registered ECC memory, and 2 sticks 32GB each DDR4-2400 registered ECC memory. Unfortunately, something happened with my CPU and one of the memory channels has died, that's why I have only tested the dual memory channel configuration. Geekbench 5 and user benchmark results will be linked in the video description for those who are interested. Core i7-6800K does not support registered ECC memory, that's why I have only validated it with 4 sticks 16GB each DDR4-3000. With Core i7-6800K, maximum RAM speed was DDR4-2600, the same as on the other Chinese motherboards I have tested. Anything higher than that did not work. Now it's time to make a conclusion about Machinist X99Z motherboard. Right now you can buy it from AliExpress for 60-70 euros, which makes it cheaper than Huanangzhi X998M, but provides more features. On the pros we have price, small form factor, quad-channel memory, two NVMe slots, one for PCI Express SSD drives, another one for the SATA SSD drives. I also personally think that this motherboard looks pretty good, it does not have any weird colors, it's just pure black. On the con side we have locked BIOS, FPT tool does not work and it's quite problematic to use USB programmer to read-write BIOS. 
CPU overclocking does not work, there is no PCI Express X4 slots on the motherboard, and VRM thermal performance is quite poor. My score for the motherboard would be 6 out of 10, and I could only recommend it if you are really on a tight budget and you desperately need 4 memory channels. In other cases, I would say that Klisra X99 D8 is slightly more expensive but significantly better option. If you need a small motherboard in MATX form factor, then take a look at Huanan GX998 M and Klisra X99 D4. These two motherboards, even though they have only two memory slots, they have better quality, better VRM thermal performance, and way less different kind of issues. Still, if you're on a really tight budget and you want to use very cheap CPU such as Xeon E5 2620V3, then Machinist X99Z could be a decent option if you can find it for a decent price, let's say 55 to 60 euros. Link to the original video from Mick Gambit in Russian will be provided in the video description. I took the modified BIOS for Machinist X99Z from him. For now, that's all I have for you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I hope you have enjoyed it. Goodbye.